cap at Ballarat and I had a good chance to test my new impact mill design here. This is a prototype. I wanted to make it simple, inexpensive, easy to maintain, especially with wear. So, it's light enough. When you take out one of these, put it here, and you can just wheel it around like a uh, wheelbarrow. It's a Mr. Harbor Freight six horsepower motor. Simple one-to-one -one belt drive. And then we have an elutriation column to try and size everything. Drop the uh, oversized back into the grinding mill. Then you have a cyclone and a filter bag for dust collection. And there's your bucket to get it all in. It does a pretty good job. This one is crushing really hard quartz. And it did, uh, yeah, I would guess 85% passing 30 mesh. Here we have residue of an old stockpile, not terribly old actually, fairly recent. They piled up reportedly a hundred tons or so of rock here and uh, then hauled it off and they didn't clean it up very well and so I'm going to do a little testing. As you can see there's a variety of different rocks. I have relatively clean quartz, some really dark iron stain material and so I took a bucket of miscellaneous stuff here and hauled it off to camp and then hand sorted it. So here's what I have from one bucket. Pretty clean looking quartz, more mineralized looking quartz. Some kind of black rock, very small crystals, can't tell what it is. I'm assuming it's igneous kind of the wall rock, I could easily be mistaken. This looks like it's basically dark quartz with lots of pyrites disseminated through it. That would be my guess would be the high grade. We shall see. So it turned out the only ore from that stockpile that had significant panable gold was this bull quartz looking stuff. The one I'd least suspect. Anyhow, it did have some panable gold. I'm going to go get a full bucket of it and run it through the impact mill to see what the heck happens. That'll be a good test. what the impact mill looks like on the inside. The uh, rotary impact assembly is simply quarter inch steel plate welded onto a shaft. Those three pieces of angle iron serve to both slow down the airflow and provide a secondary impact surface so that uh, it's kind of like hammering against an anvil instead of just smacking something in mid-air. And uh, you can see kind of the wear patterns inside the mill. So far it's only had, yeah, I don't know, maybe 100 pounds total through it. So there's really not much wear going on. I don't like the angle iron because it creates those dead spots behind it. And I'll probably make a production model with actual liners. So that you can go ahead and change them out and resurface them as needed.
Okay, let's take two cups of product, put it on a 30 mesh screen, see how much oversize we get. Now, looks like maybe one-eighth of the original volume is oversized. Hey, well, the impact mill did a pretty good job. Got at least as much gold as the initial test. There was a lot of uh, hard-facing slag and such because this is the first run since we hard-faced it. There's a lot of that, but it's easily removable by a magnet, and I expect a lot less tramp iron in the future. So, it's an interesting test on the ore pile, and an interesting first test on the impact mill. Happy prospecting, and keep it safe out there.